Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the NeuroBytes podcast. Today, we have Bradley Miller with us. Um, he's He and I, we've been friends for like, what, five years plus? Um, yep. Met, we met down in Laguna Beach at a conference. Um, he's the CEO and owner of Big Bob. Um, it's a large flooring um, company. So they, so you have like all sorts of outlets across the U S that sells flooring products, um, to consumers. And, um, he's here today to talk to us about how, how he's going through the digital and AI transformation with his company. Was that, did I sum it up right? Yeah, we're getting there. We're on the right track. It's a, it's a franchise system. I'm a franchisee, so I'm not, uh, I don't own the whole system. I own my particular franchise itself. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then, and so you come from a very traditional um, sort of industry where you're selling different types of flooring products to uh, consumers. What got, you know, what made you um, think about shifting or implementing AI? Well, I'm, I've always been into technology. So mm -hmm. um, I always try to be on the cutting edge as far as our, our industry goes and looking outside of our industry and seeing what other other people are doing so in the last year and a half really the uh for us ai really started to, to come aboard as far as things that are out there and things that are possibilities for us to be able to do like for instance i just i had a conversation last week with somebody that they've got a product that they're bringing to market where so when we do blueprints for instance so for if we got a commercial project a hospital or something like that you you upload the the digital blueprint and we would have to click on all the corners and to do a takeoff of the how much material we need for all the different rooms um the new technologies that are coming out are you upload them and it actually does it all for you you don't you don't have to click on anything you don't have to do any of that stuff it 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 actually lays it all out and tells you exactly what you need and i see them when the conversation that i have with them they're going to get better and better to where then you upload the the data sheets as all the materials and what rooms that they go in because the architect has already laid all that out and it'll actually give you all the material list of everything that that you need so for us that's like hours and hours and hours of time saving so anything that we can do to, to save time is beneficial to us you know we can we can turn out produce more quotes more quickly um and and probably bid projects that we weren't going to be able to get to because we were too busy. We only have a, a finite resource in people. So you can only bid so much, so many projects, right? So this this will expand us to be able to to bid more projects. Right. So you've been using it to write like RF, RFPs or, or uh bid proposals using AI. Right. right. That's 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 what's that's what's coming for for us. So we're in the in the research pro process for that to be able to put it all into where it'll actually build the quote for you and everything. Um so I want to be on the front side of that, not the back side of that. I want to be okay. the implementer, the person doing it. I mean, we'll have to double check in the beginning, you know, yeah. to be able to put 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 it into place, build the proposals, and then we'll probably go in and do it manually just to make sure that everything is coming out right. But once you get comfortable with it, we can spit those things out re really, really quickly. So and we're, we're also using it like the stuff that we've done with you, um, conversational um um, AI so that we can talk to our customers anytime, you know, 24 seven, whenever they want to have a conversation with us, we can use AI to talk, to have a conversation with them, with them as we've trained it in our language, you know, so it speaks like it's us, not, not like it's a robot, you know, and that's the things that's getting better and better. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just for people, you know, who are listening here, um, uh, Brad is actually one of our clients and, um, we built an appointment setting bought for um his flooring company um essentially you know you can text this text their toll-free number any time of the day and and then the ai will converse with you answer as there any product related questions you have and then um set you up in your appointment and then get that's, you that's the real interesting thing is to be able to train them which i i found really interesting i just when i first started looking at that I was thinking, okay, well, all this data is out there. All the information is out there. So this, uh, okay. you know, the, it's in the ether and this this brain of whatever the, the you know, the AI is, is going to be able to do all this stuff. But it's not necessarily that way. It's that you can upload all, all of your information, everything that you have. And, and any business owner or any company, 
they have a lot of information. If, once you really start looking at it, you don't realize how much stuff that you have, you know, until you, until you start going through it. And you're like, oh, my goodness, I have a lot of data here. And it's, yeah. it could even be old training that we've done with our team or stuff that we've produced for for um, for the general public, for, for you know, our consumers. Uh, all that stuff, you can upload it and then let it kind of let the AI go through and filter it all out to be able to have a conversation. And you can train it. What I thought was really, really interesting is being able to train it to talk like a person instead of talking like a like a robot, like 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 we're saying. Right, right, absolutely, yep, yep. Um, and then as you're, you know, like what I guess, like you know, a lot of business owners they don't even know where to start with AI. Like what you know, and uh, what made you think like this was like a valuable um, investment? And then how did you make that decision to investigate like? you know, what's possible with AI and then to make, you know, make the investment into uh, this technology. You know, for me, it's being, it's, it's getting outside of my box and getting outside of the, the industry. And, um, and this is how we met uh, is I was in, a, um, I'm in master mastermind groups. So going to those mastermind groups, I meet people that are in totally different industries and people that are in tech and people that are in social media and people that are in digital marketing, people that are all kinds of industries. And being able to see how other people are using um, AI and any kind of technology in their businesses that are not in not from my industry is really what opened my eyes to that stuff. Because I was like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of really really cool stuff out there, and <laughs> and, and I would highly recommend that to anybody to join something to where you are outside of your comfort zone and outside of your industry because people have a tendency to pigeonhole themselves in a in a whatever industry that they're in. And I can go to any one of my industry meetings and I know everything that they're, that they're doing there. I, I teach a lot of those classes. I can go and I can, I'm the guy that's up in the front, but when you go to other things outside of your box, you really open your eyes. And that's, that's how, that's how I came about it. And that's how I came about even, even like high level. That's how, um, Kassam is, is the one that introduced me to high level. And I'm, I'm like, this is great. You know? So it's, it's just, it's educating yourself and letting other people help you. Right, right. Speaking of high level, um, are you so you you've ob obviously white labeled that, um, and then and then do you have a one different account for each of your flooring companies? Like, how are you structuring structuring? Right, right. We we have a sub account for each 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 of our divisions, and what we're doing right now because we're in the beginning stages of this too. This was this was fourth quarter of last year when we actually started putting it into place. So our we've got the white label system all done and by second quarter of this year we'll actually launch and go out to a, i've got a beta group that's ready to, to go and start testing but i want to have all my ducks in a row and all of our testing done internally first so we're that's what we're doing right now and it's 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 really really cool because it's it it's going to get rid of at least five different pieces of software for us you know all the you know things that things that we've used in the past podium click funnels you know our crm tool um all those now combine into one thing so so much so much better but it, it's it is a massive program though so it's a it's definitely a learning curve but it's but it's easy you know it, it is very functional and very intuitive so it's easy to do it's just it does so much it does. yeah, yeah that i guess that brings me to my next question it does so much um what are you specifically using it for because it does like a hundred different things not right. exactly so CR the CRM CRM was the start. So our customer relationship management tool to be able to have um, and it switch up. We're switching from an industry specific product um, over to to the high level to the high level product um, and to be able to track all of our customer inter interactions and and to automate some of that. So that's another part of almost like AI, but it's just the automation stuff where it stays in touch with them instead of us having to manually do it. Everything that we've done, it has been a manual process in, in the past. Um, our industry as a whole is pretty uh, not tech savvy. <laughs> so even the, the software companies that are out there for the industry are years behind, I feel. Um, uh, one of one of our main ones are our ERP system, so our accounting system. Um, they got bought out by a, a large company, so they they're rolling out something. It's going to take like two years for them though to roll out, and I I believe by the time they roll it out in two years, they're gonna they're still gonna be ten years behind. 
<laughs> you know, so it's, it's one of those things. So I want to I want to do business with people like high level, which are, which are on the cutting edge, and they're always they're always coming out with new stuff. Right, investing and coming up with new stuff. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And then I'm just curious how you're reselling it to, because you're you you know you and I had a conversation before. You're also going to resell it to other flooring companies as well. So, so how are you customizing that for? So for we the- have a if, if if you're not some people probably aren't familiar with high level, but it has a snapshot. So the snapshot is basically the process of how you how you go through your workflow, how you do your do your business. So we're we've set all that stuff up. That's the testing part that we're doing right now to make sure everything works correctly the way that we, the way that we want it. And then we could take that and resell that to people in our industry. And instead of having it be one hundred percent customized, which we could customize it for every 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 other flooring dealer. But I think most people are probably like me, where if somebody brought something to me and it was already done, right? Boom, you can plug and play. Mm-hmm. And this is what it does, and this is how it interacts with your with your team, and this is how it interacts with your with your customer or your client. Then it's much much easier. So from a selling standpoint, <clears throat> excuse me, from a selling standpoint, I think that's a the way that, that's the the progression for for us. Yeah, yeah. Let's dive in a little deeper into that. Like, let's say specifically for the flooring uh, industry, right? Um, what kind of things would people be looking for, and how did you like customize those um, snapshots? So ours is the the workflow. So from the time, so from a, I'll use the retail the our retail side of our business for for this, right? So retail is is um, is business to to customer so the consumer uh, on for for a house or a condo or whatever not not commercial like i was talking earlier like about hospitals and stuff like that that's a whole different type of deal so the retail side of our business would be um we're advertising however we're advertising whether it's digital or whether it's television or whether it's traditional newspaper or whatever we're driving we're trying to swing the swing the door right we're trying to get people to come into the come into the store so it's that interaction from as soon as they've made contact with us. That's the, the good thing about high level too, whether it's a phone call or whether it's a email or whether it's a web chat, it all gets, it goes right into high level. So you can create, turn them into a lead right away. So mm-hmm. if they call, for instance, they're in conversations, we convert it to a lead. We've got their phone number. We've got their name. We've got the recorded phone call of them calling the store. And now we start building that, building that out. So now we have a workflow of we have to get them into our facility to pick materials. They have to look at the look at the product, right? So right. they come in our store to look at the product. So the salesperson walks through that. We call it peeling the onion, fi- fi- figuring out what they want. But all right. that information goes in there, and then we have a another step where we have to go to their we have to go to their home because we have to measure it physically measure to be able to build the the estimate properly. We can't just say, oh, your house is approximately this big. We have to know exactly what it is because every house is different, right? Yeah. Even if even if two neighbors have the exact same house, yeah. what's in that house could be different. They might have existing tile in one room and this they might have vinyl in, in, in the room in the neighbor's house, you know? So it's yeah. different when we're tearing it out. So that's our, our step-by-step as to where they're at in the process. And then there's only three ways that we can deliver product. We either install it, Mm-hmm. customer either picks it up themselves and they or, do it. or we deliver it to them so there's only three ways so okay. one that's that's our steps of going through we we get them we get them in the pipeline we get them into the facility we do a measurement uh, on it on proposal and that's that's typically when we write the order is right there in, in the house okay. uh, the estimators on site they measure it they they just change the quantities and and then we go to the delivery process and then the last thing is follow up, and that's that's a big thing that flooring dealers do not do is follow up. They they're not making the phone calls, they're not sending text messages, they're not sending emails after the project is done. They're not asking for referrals, which we can do automatically right through high level. They're not asking for reviews, which we can do automatically through high level. They're not asking for after sales service like like cleaning products or maintenance maintenance products any of that type of stuff they're most 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 of us are not doing that so we can automate all that within high level ah uh, 
Ah, I see. I see. So it's building out that workflow of like this is this customer like adding tags or I don't know how you're doing it. Um, to, to say like this customer ordered this and then they want delivery or they want to pick up and right. then. And then so just having that whole system in place where everything is is on it. And it reminds and it reminds them like if if they're if they're getting a will call, so they're picking up at our facility, um, it will alert them, hey, you have product, you need to come pick it up. When, when would you like to schedule your pickup? Yeah, uh, because in the past we would just we we would have the material sitting there for them, we package it up and we just wait, you know, until they until they come get it. And then it's just it could be there for months. Yeah, because some sometimes people will impulse buy something, and then they just wait to come get it. But we really want to get it moved out of our system into their into their home, where they can store it in their garage or store it wherever they want to store it. I want to get it out of mine because then we don't run into damage or loss yeah. or uh, you know missing a couple boxes of tile gets taken off of a pallet for some reason, and then they don't have enough. And then it's a discontinued product by the time they're putting it in and then they and then they don't have enough and I can't get more, you know. So it's 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 making us way more efficient. Got it. Got it. That makes so much more sense. So um as you're, you know, like what made you going taking the conversation from um high level back to AI here? Um, when you're looking at your you know overall processes, how did you figure out like which areas could be improved with AI? Um, as as like you you know you're the strategy guy and then so how did you look at which areas you were going to do with your business in terms of AI from a high strategy level perspective? We're we were looking at at kind of the low hanging fruit so the things that are easily implemented. I mean like everybody's used ChatGPT you know even yeah. even even when I first started with that, with that like going in going way back to them and, and you know helping me write emails and helping me write. Um, uh, documents for my team and help, you know helping me explain things better. I call it word vomit, where I would just type random stuff in there, getting it out of my brain onto a piece of paper, um, but letting it kind of rewrite stuff. So that was that was the first the first step, right? But now we're looking at there's so many things like we're I, I, I've got cheat layer open on my on my computer right now that's got all of these different like social media stuff things that where it can produce things. Um, it's just a matter of being open-minded, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I'm not, I'm not necessarily going, Hey, I would love to have an AI for this. I'm not at that point yet. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing what's out there and then saying, how can we take that and put it into our business? It's, it's spending the time and it can be a rabbit hole. I mean, you could spend <laughs> days, <laughs> hours and hours and hours looking at stuff, but it's being able to research and find stuff that's, that's already available um that's not things that you have to develop you know that you can take and tweak and put it in put it into your business so right so just talking right. to different business owners in different niches um joining masterminds and then figuring out what's out there and then you're, you're thinking about like oh maybe this would look uh, be great in my business too absolutely absolutely yeah and that's and, and like i said you mentioned the mastermind again and i'm i'm said that earlier i'm in i'm in two different um um mastermind groups that are just awesome i mean that i can't emphasize that enough to people to get outside of that zone that you're always in because we have a tendency to put ourselves in this box you know and and really open your eyes to what's what's out there and what other people are doing um there's some really really cool stuff you know yeah 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 yeah. So you were talking, so in the beginning of this conversation, you were talking about building a proposal um, mm -hmm. system using AI. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about like how you envision that to be done? Like, is it a custom app? Is it a no code app? Or is it just, you know, um, a cheap? No, it's, it's actually, it's actually a, a company that's actually built, they're building this out. That was my conversation with them. They're, they oh. built out, they built out the part that'll do the estimates and the room by room. Yeah. So now their next level, they've already done it for, so like we're, I'm in the trades, I'm in flooring. They've done it for plumbing already where they can import, they import the blueprint. It imports the schedule sheets and it actually tells the plumber all the parts and pieces that they need to order. Oh, wow. Yeah. They don't have to go through and manually figure all that stuff out. That's so, it. so flooring is one of the ones that's on their list. They're, they're, they're not there yet, but I'm, we're, 
we've committed to them to go ahead and test the actual takeoff engine of it to be able to put the blueprints in there so we can just figure out the quantities quickly like that. And then the next step will be, okay, now, so that would be, it'll figure out all the, part, the, the, the quantities, but then you have to manually tie that together with pricing and everything. So there, that's when they get to the, to the, to that, to our product category, then that's going to be really cool. But like I said, they already did it with plumbing. He was showing me a plumbing deal where they just scanned it all in. And it, it within like 30 seconds, it spit out a parts list. <laughs> I was like, this takes hours and hours and hours for somebody to do on a major project. You know, wow. it's pretty cool. You know, isn't it crazy how far technology has come? Stuff that I would have, I would have, I would have never thought, you know, I, I remember years ago, I said, uh, I mean, this is eight, nine, maybe 10 years ago. I said, I was like, wouldn't it be really cool to have a device that like for us that we could just sit in the middle of a room and it would like scan the whole room and create like a 3D image, a model <laughs> of, of of the room. Now it can. And it can. And that, that stuff that's <laughs> out there. You know, it started with cameras being able to go 360. Yeah. And you, could, you could take pictures of the room, but now you can actually create a digital image of the room. And then the next step for me would be that, um, then how do you put product on it? You could say, Hey, I want to, this whole wall needs to be tile. You would just say, put tile on that wall and it would boom, it would put the tile on there. And you could, and or you could even impose, um, we have it with our, on our website, we have this, um, where, where people could upload a picture of their home, of whatever yeah. room, whatever space they're doing. And then they select the product that they want from us. And it puts that product in their, in their house. So they can see what that product looks like in their home. We are, we have that now. I mean, five years ago, you would have never thought that that would have been something that, that uh, was out there. And I think from a consumer base, people are getting more and more comfortable using that type of technology too. So we have that in our, in our showrooms as well. We have a, um, through one of our, through one of our memberships, we have a proprietary product um, where customers can bring it. They can, from their phone, they can upload it right to a big screen that we have and they can take all of our products that we have in there and do it right in the showroom too. So we can, they can actually physically look at the product and then look at it in their home because they've already taken pictures of their home before they came in to the showroom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I remember when I bought my first home, well, the one I'm living in right now, um, the, the builder was like, okay, you know, show me all these like small samples of like tiles, backsplashes, cabinet colors, floor colors. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if like, I can just see what that looks like instead of like taking this like small square and then like using my imagination to imagine what it would look like. That's, that's really tough. Like, I'm like, I'm committing hundreds and thousands of dollars to this house. And I don't even know how it's going to turn out to look like. It's difficult because traditionally uh, like carpet samples for instance they'll they'll have one big piece and yeah. then you turn it over and it's got all the colors on the back and they sometimes they're like this big we mm -hmm. try to make them so that they're bigger and bigger but they're they're tiny you really can't you really can't see much but if you if you pull that into a screen and show it into into a home and when you're building a new house um you already have the blueprints you have all that stuff you know so you can you you could go to okay. the model homes take pictures of the model homes and then change all the the you know because if you have all the standard floor plans for somebody now you can show them what it looks like right right in front of them and uh, the and I, I told you our our ERP company got bought out and they got bought out by, by a software company that they also do the cabinets and and the the 2020 software is the cabinet so it's it's the the visual part of it for doing cabinets as well so these companies are consolidating now for like all home interiors from a software standpoint so i see that being a big you know a boom for for all of us sure 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 i just thought of a question back into the high level i mean you you have the selling portion um do you, and in the installation portion do you ha also have a maintenance portion so do you have a automation set up for people who um more, more like i wasn't happy with the way that you know this floor was installed or something like that as well so like like service like customer service to go back and and repairs or or fixes or any of that stuff. Right now we have that in another piece of another piece of software, but we will eventually migrate that that into high level too. Yeah. So that's the, that's in our scheduling system. That's that's outside of of um, 
And we use we use Monday.com a lot for a lot of stuff because it's so we you know, I was a big, I was a spreadsheet guy, you know, so I was always building whether, whether it was Google Sheets or, or, or Excel, we had spreadsheets for everything. And we've migrated most of that to anything that, that we don't have software for. We just created our own stuff within Monday.com because it's so versatile so and, and easy to use and create dashboards. So it's visual. So like with our service stuff, we know we can look at it visual. We were just like, I was just in a meeting yesterday, we were looking at that stuff. So we've got graphical representations of how many services that we have to go back on what types of services that they are um so i could see eventually where ai would be able to mine that stuff for me and kind of like i said pick the low-hanging fruit and say you need a train on this you're having um, you're having to go back and restretch carpet because guys aren't stretching it properly um so it's co- it costs a lot of money to go do that stuff but we maintain that for forever we do that for our customers like we do free stuff for for the life that you have it. Like a lot of people have like a one year or two year warranty on things on labor. Ours is lifetime. If, if anything that we did, if there's a problem with it, because, because of something that we did, we'll, we'll just come back and fix it. You know, we'll take care of that to create, you know, good uh, relations with our, with our customers and repeat, repeat and referral business. But I can see that becoming more, more automated and even reminding people like that they need to like carpet, for instance, every 12 to 18 months, they need to have it cleaned. We don't do we don't do professional cleaning, but I could see developing a relationship with a qualified cleaner and being able to say, "Hey, it's time to clean your carpet. Per your warranty, you need to you need to maintain you know every twelve to eighteen months. Talk to them about the 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 benefits of having a hot water extraction or whatever, and they could have a schedule link that would go right to somebody else that maybe we would have a referral or affiliate program with them or something. You know, mm-hmm. I could see that happening really really well. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 So you, so you're, you're, you're going to build like basically your own custom extensions to your, your high level. And then right. so, and you're not going to tell people it's high level, you know? No, no, it's just, ours is uh, floor wise. We've private, we've private labeled it as floor wise. So um, that's our consulting side of our business. So it's, it's floor, it'll be floor wise dot app is our, so we have floorwise.com is our company and then floorwise.app will be the is the we're we're going through the process with the um, the Google Play Store and the uh, app and Apple Store right now to actually have it labeled and be able to download it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Awesome. So instead of instead of the high level lead connector, it'll be our private. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're you're private. Yeah. yeah. Got, it. Got it. So, um a couple questions here. Um not about the app, but um uh, just about you know, you, you've got what? I want to say like 50 people working for you. Is that right? 85. Um, 85, yeah. Fluctuates yeah. between 75 and 85, depending on the season. And so, yeah. yeah right so you got a lot of, you got a really big team. Um, And a lot of them are, it's in the very traditional industry, uh, okay. flooring. Um, right. So you are very open-minded to trying AI and, tr- and getting on the latest um tech how do you motivate your team to also be on that same page or get them to start? I've, I've, I've surrounded myself with, with what I believe are, are world-class quality people. And, and I, and uh, we have a lot of, a lot of team members that have been with us a long time, like 20 plus years. We had three people retire last year. They've been with me until retirement, like three guys literally retired. You know, it's, it's the, the first time I've ever had that where I've had multiple people retire, retire in one year. But they were all twenty plus years that they that they had been with been with the company. Mm-hmm. So all of our 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 main people have been with us a, a long time. And one of the things I've always told people from the beginning is there's only one thing consistent about our business, and that's change. I am willing to change anything, and I'm also willing to. And it could I, I I use this as a as an analogy um, uh, in our in our executive meeting. We were talking about it th- this week. Is that you know. With change, I, I would come in and say, "This is back in the day." I would come in and say, "I need. We need to move that display two feet. I think it would look better over here." You know, <laughs> we'd, we'd over. So we move it. And I go, I "Also, so that's change." But I also keep in mind that I might walk in two days from now and go, "You know what? I was wrong. I'll make. I, I made a mistake. Let's move it back. It was better over there." So the only thing consistent about our business is change, and we're always evolving, and we're always looking for newer, better ways to do stuff, and more efficient ways to do things. I'm not a status quo guy, and 
And I think my, my, my team, we built that into our structure and our, our culture to where everybody's just because we've always done it one way, doesn't mean that's the best or the right way to do it. That's just the way we've done it. It's it, there can be a, always be on the lookout for better, more efficient, more productive um, ways to do anything within our business. So that's just building the right team. I think from, from my standpoint. Absolutely. Absolutely. Building the right team. But um, I think as you, you're, we, we move forward into the future, um, you're going to realize some of your team members will be replaced by AI um, in the coming years, right? Um, I just had this conversation yesterday and, and, and I was saying, you know, us being in the trades, I don't see any of our, our trades people aren't going to be, the people that are actually performing the work aren't going to be replaced by by computers and AI. But there's definitely going to be more efficiencies from a back office standpoint, you know? Yes. I, sure. I could see a, a, a time like from accounting systems and, and things like that. That's where I'm super excited about stuff that to be able to have AI match invoices and be able to be able to really communicate with our our manufacturers um with with their product catalogs, which we're, we're already doing that with product catalogs and putting them onto our website. But being able to where then it's just one person managing all of this stuff instead of yeah. actually doing the the steps you yeah. have to you have to be a, a more of a, a manager or a liaison or looking to make sure that everything was done the way that it needed to be done mm. but not physically doing it so you you might have three people physically doing it now you just got one person managing you know and that person might be a higher level person they may they might make one and a half times as much as what your other three people made but yeah. you got rid of Three now you're down to one and you're paying one and a half instead of three. You know. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. I, I want to explore that a little further with you. So, how would you manage that as a leader? How would you manage that conversation to get rid of the three people, hire one person who is much um, can manage the AI systems? I think it'll go through attrition more than anything. I, I really do. Um, for us, I don't see it being an overnight thing where it's like, oh, we've got this new software. I don't need three people. You know. Um, I think it's going to be, we're going to start implementing things, even though it's fast and furious on the, there's so much out there. I think the implementation process of a lot of this stuff is slower than is actually slower than it, than it, than it's being developed. You know, the development side of stuff is fast, but the implementation side of it is slow and it, and it, and it, and it has, and it has to be, you know, it, it really to make sure that it's, you're not screwing up your business and and that people are properly trained. So, right, 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 right. For sure, for sure. So you and I, I kind of see this ladder with the steps that you're taking. Like first, we built an appointment setting AI bot for you, and then next, you you know you went out and you found software that could um, help people visualize a room and, and and to see the flooring choices that that um, is needed there and how much it would cost and how much you had to order, etc. And then the third step, you're now looking at the back office. Um, and seeing how you can tie invoices together with AI so that, you know, the whole thing is on automation. You can, you can start replacing some of your back office. Yeah. I think that's going to be huge for, for everybody. And what happens like, like we're, we're a little bit, there's, there's definitely bigger companies than us, but there's a most of them are a lot smaller, smaller than we are. So with those technologies, I can see the smaller companies, it's the, it's the owner or, or the, that typically wears all these hats, right? So yeah. it's not necessarily that they're getting, they're not even going to get rid of people because it's them, you know, they're just, um, free up more of their they're, time. they're just freeing up time to be able to run their business or build their business instead of, instead of physically entering invoices and physically, you know, in, in, doing data entry. Now they have the ability to sell more or, or, or build more or, you know, make their, make their business better. Sure. Oop, I just got something in my eye here. Um, so speaking of that, you know, most most operators, like especially in kind of like these local spaces, they they tend to just like stay as a solopreneur where they have one or two trade people helping helping them. You actually grew it into pretty fair sized business. I right. call it something into my eye here. Um, so what was a mind mind shift set a uh, mindset shift that got you there? And then what changes did you have to make in terms of um, structuring your corporation to get? It was, it was, it was big and it was giving up control and letting people 
but this was just goes back to just employment stuff, letting people training them and letting people do their job and not doing the job for them. You know, because it started, it was just me. It was me. I was the only I was the only person. Uh, and then as you start adding people, you have to train them and you have to be willing to let them fail and let them succeed as is a is a big thing. And they as long as the the outcome is where you want it to be, the process of getting there, you know, we have our systems and everything, but the process of getting there, they make they might make a decision a little differently than I would. But as long as the outcome is what we want. I don't care. So I had to, I had to get to that point because I wasn't that guy. I was that. And that was just a maturity thing. I was, I was the the guy that was like, I'm the only one that knows how to do it. Right. And once you figure out that you're not the only one that knows how to do it, that other people can actually do it as good or better than you can, yeah. then that's when you can build and scale and grow and be more successful. That is such a big problem that I see literally every entrepreneur um, gets stuck in. So how did you, like, was it more of a mindset shift or was it just a lot of documentation so you can kind of get what's in your brain out on paper? For me, it was a mind, uh, it was, a, it was, it was a mindset. It was changing how I operated internally within my brain and how I interacted with my team as I was building the team. The documentation has come way later. I mean, we're we're deep into documenting stuff right now. We we call them, some people call them SOPs. We call them working procedures. Um, but we use Monday Monday.com for that, where we have every position in the company, and then we have all of the tasks that somebody does, and then whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, you know, however or whenever it's needed, um, and then we detail how to do the task and. What what we do with our team is we tell, we have them build it. The, the person that's doing that job, they build it. I and mean, somebody else has to approve it, but they build it because we tell them, build it like you're not here tomorrow and I have to sit down and do your job. Okay, I knew how to do your job 10 years ago, but I haven't done it. I haven't done it in 10 years. So I need a detailed list of how to sit down and do it. Or if I hired somebody off the street, if they were computer savvy, they could actually work their way through it with screenshots and videos and be able to, now they wouldn't be as efficient. They probably wouldn't get everything done, but at least it's documented on 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 how to what the processes are. And the crazy thing is, when you do that in your business and you make people line out all the stuff that they do, mm-hmm. then you'll start looking at people and going, "Holy crap, this guy has way too much stuff on their plate," or "This person has nothing on their plate." You know, if they only put five things down, really, that's all you do. Then they'll start coming up with, "Oh no, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do that." Okay, well, document all of it, all of it. So. But to go back, for me, building the team, it was a mind shift set, first of all, and then documentation came later. If I was doing it again, I would document from the beginning, but we just didn't. Sure, sure. A couple questions here. So I think a lot of people, the reason that they are so scared of giving up control is because they're scared of getting fucked over. Um, Like if someone... steals your stuff and copies your business model and just runs with it um because they have all your all of your information so they feel that they had to protect that information um did i mean how did you how did you structure your business in a way so that you gave people enough freedom but you're also not getting um you know you know and i've had people i've had that i've had people leave and they go they end up they, they usually go to a competitor I've had people go and start their own businesses and compete against me. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and in the beginning I was, I was really upset or pissed, you know, or <laughs> uh, all the, all those emotions and feelings. But now I'm like, okay, Hey, if, if you're going to do it, go ahead, go do it. They've all failed. None of them have ever, they, 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 they've cost me money because they, but over time they end up failing. And and we've had people that leave, they go spend a few years doing what they think they want to do, and then they they try right. to come back because it's comfort and we have we have everything in place. They think that the, the, they know their position, but they don't know the entire company, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I've had it from from techs from installers leave, go start their own business, try to compete against me, but they don't know the business. They know how to install. But they don't know the selling side of it. They don't know the business side of it. And then I've had um, 
salespeople leave that went and tried to start start their own business, but they don't know the installation side. And they don't know the back office functionality of it, you know? So they're just, they're thinking that they can go as a solopreneur and that they're going to go hire five or six, seven people. And then they're going to, you know, compete with us right, right off. And you'd have to be well-funded first of all, but yeah, it, it, that's just something that you have to deal with. Um, 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 from like, I'm in, I'm in Arizona, my businesses are in Arizona. It's a right to work state. So it's not like I can hold them to like, we have non-competes. We put all that stuff in there, but yeah. if I ever sued somebody for it, I would lose because it's a right to work state. They have, they have the, they can go start whatever they want. They can't steal something that's proprietary, but we really don't have that much stuff that's, that's proprietary. It's things that are out there that we're using like, like high level. They couldn't, they could go buy it, you know, if they wanted to resell it. Yeah. It, it, not my software you know it's not like they're going to come take something that i've built and and recode it recode it for themselves or or use it for themselves or whatever but um yeah you just got to be know that your business is successful for a reason and when people leave people leave and 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 if they they take their stuff with you i just keep moving forward i I don't have time to 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 deal with that you know that's a great mindset (laughs) Great mindset to um, to be in. So um, as we wrap up here, my last question for you would be, what do you think is like the key to your um, success? Like so many people have come and failed and, you know, they say like, you know, entrepreneurship, like there's like a nine out of 10, we're probably 95% of businesses, uh, small businesses fail. So, you know, I guess like if you could give one piece of one or more pieces of advice to entrepreneurs, um, what would you say that would be? is to number one be open open to what's out there mm-hmm. and you don't know everything people have a tendency to think that they know everything and, and you don't there's there you have to let yourself learn from other people and and that's what will really make you successful is being able to to take what other people i, I always say i've never invented anything i've just i've just taken the best ideas from the people around me and mm-hmm. implemented them better than they did. So if you can learn from other people and be a better implementer, you'll be able to grow. And and like when I started, I started in 1993. Um, I mean, I was a kid, you know, I, I was young. And the company that I had worked, I wasn't in the flooring business. I was in the, I was, I was in the uh, turf care. So like we sold products to golf courses and Home Depot, you know, and um, Kmart back then into the garden centers and stuff like that. And the company that I worked, I was public and I had stock in this company and they went bankrupt. So I still have the stock certificate in a in a frame in my office in Yuma. And I said, I'll never work for anybody again. I'll just work for myself. So that's how I ended up in the floor. I bought a little tiny floor covering store from a lady. Uh, and that's how I started. But it it everything I did was I learned from other people because I didn't know the industry at all. So I had to learn from people that knew the industry. So I learned from reps starting and then I learned from other dealers starting and then I learned from people that have been around for a long time. And then as you build your business, I'm now I'm learning like stuff, like just having conversations with you and talking about chat bots and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's something that I can take and I can implement, you know, um, okay. not something that I had on, had on my radar at, at that time. But then it's like, Oh, Hey, yeah, let's do that. You know? So learning from other people, and implementing better than others, I think, is the best thing that, that, that I can advice that I can give to any entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So huge, so huge. Doing more and then just like reading about it. I think so. Right. Much, yeah, yeah. I think that it's would be funny. like I read a lot. Um, I well, I don't read a lot. I listen a lot. I, I like I love audiobooks, but I love to. And and if I listen to an audiobook that I really like, then I buy the book and then I'll reread it. And then, then you really really learn from it. But but learning from people you know, and having relationships with people because then it's just like, yeah, I can, I could call you or I could text you. And if I have a question mm. so much easier to have somebody that, that, that knows their, their, whatever, whatever it is that they're a professional at, they, you know, somebody can ask me about, about flooring. I can give you the answers like that, you know, yeah, yeah. whereas if you had to go out and try to read a book on it or research it online. Is the information that you're getting correct or is it bad information? You know, so it's interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) awesome well thank you so much for being on the podcast today brandon and brad and sharing all your all your wisdom here with everyone thank you for having me i appreciate it